Hi. So I'm back with another podcast, Cat in the Hat. So I'm wearing my hat again. Um, cap, cap, cat in the cap. Uh, yeah, but it's cat in the hat rhymes better. But anyway, to to go forth, this the topic again. It's it's relating to again consciousness, um, intentions, sense of identity, non-identity, etc. Because for me, these are even exploring this or even listening to something about this or reading something along these lines can really alter um, alter the experience of just being being a person um, and then maybe alter the experience when running in a class and sort of whatever class it may be, be it a handstand class, be it a yoga, mobility class, sort of the, the intention or just the way of being or just even if you're doing your practice on your own, same thing, same thing applies. And beyond all that to whatever you do, um, I do have videos on like snippet videos on tutorials, like on how to do a handstand and stuff. I mean, they're quite dry material to share. And I, I also personally prefer to just see people, be it online or um, in person. So I can see a little bit more of what's going on with the person specifically. And yeah, but to get back um, to sort of this, this sense of embodiment and what, what why we do what we do and what's the intention behind it, um, I'm going to go to, to some words, some root words. So I don't speak Hebrew apart from what well, this one word, um, shalom, um, excuse pronunciation, it means peace. And in Arabic, um, salam means peace as well. And the root meaning of both words, um, shalom and um, shalom and salam is wholeness. So in a sense, the peace is could be considered from a sense of this wholeness, which hopefully is what we're exploring in these podcasts. Um, and hopefully then, then we can experience a kind of yoga. Um, so from the language construction, it's very interesting, similar senses from different, different languages. And yeah, in the Hebrew perfection, um, my pronunciation is really probably die here, but Muslim, um, can you can hear the whole the wholeness as well in the root of perfection, which it comes back to this idea of, um, you know, like sayings or maybe seeing other sides to sayings, you know, like the sense of maybe not going for perfection, but actually if you consider perfection wholeness, that's a pretty cool, cool sense. So why not have a sense of perfection? Anyway, I'm going to read what I wrote and, and shared on a post because also on these podcasts, people are not necessarily um, connected with my Instagram account. So the subject is confidence, which for me is very much wholeness. That is the, for me the sense of confidence. Continually exploring and going deeper is confidence to go into a new space because it's, it's easy to hang out and pose with a buddy or to do things you're used to doing. Um, it's easy to hang out with and pose with a buddy who's happy just to have someone to go out with. So let's say you have a buddy who's just just wants someone to, to go to the nightclub or to share the evening evening meal. Um, it's a different kind of energy to some other kinds of relationships. So to our relationships with others can be telling. So if you've got people in your life who are not just friends, so they have a buddy um, to hit the night spots, because, you know, that's that can be something, um, but are honest, then you have some useful lights to help you shine into all your ways. And it doesn't mean you can't your buddies can't be both. You can have buddies who you hit the night spots with and who are honest. So that's a pretty cool combination because then it's so fun. Um, but yeah, the, the honesty is obviously something which really makes relationships very cool at times, um, maybe <laughs> other times it can be quite interesting. So a, a friend has better eyes of whether I'm twisting in a back bend and a handstand than me just feeling it. Um, I video myself, um, I ask friends like of positioning and we, we share these kind of experiences to help each other out because it's hard sometimes, the feelings are not always accurate. So again, it comes back to these sayings of go with your feelings. Well, really how, sometimes the feelings are not really how it is in sort of a physical vision way you know um so we really want to like tune in to our what are our feelings based on are they based on valid information 
and yeah so when, sometimes a friend tells me my back pen is twisted I still want a photo to validate um, sometimes what they're showing because then I can really I see what they're seeing and it's nice to see some something from someone else's eyes particularly if it relates to trying to make something a little bit more um, an anatomically you know m more useful you know you don't want to just keep like five years later have that little twist you had like so much so much bigger because you're not listening to um, the feedback you're getting that you are twisting it's easy then to just keep going into a twist and then to be completely to the side and actually think you're straight when you're you're not um so sometimes yes have photos have double check what people are telling you but hopefully we don't want to be narcissistic and say we just love ourselves regardless of others views without really exploring ourselves and continually exploring and going deeper you see there's a lot on sometimes um, posts like just love yourself and that's you know that would be the way um, we're fluid identities are you going to just keep loving this complete fluid identity what are you fixing on that you are loving um, yes there's a difference between loving and taking care of yourself then that's an action but how is this is, is the love a verb or what, what is it so what are you doing with it or is it a concept because if it's a concept it's based on something which may be very different you may say yesterday you love yourself but you're different today so what are all you doing actions? Let's say maybe getting massages, trying to eat good food, you know, so you're taking care of the body vehicle and yeah, your soul in, in many ways, giving yourself spaces at times to feel comfortable. So that's, that's, a, that's a different kind of thing. That's like actions of, of love, um, which is a different thing than a mental idea or concept of I love myself. Um, and also then are you still exploring within that? Like what is, what are, actually are you? Because then that is where it can get super interesting. We can always be new. Um, we can always go deeper. We can always explore. Um, to look in the mirror and tell yourself you are certain things may be useful when you have roles to play or certain things to do. If you're going into a meeting and you're feeling unsure of some proposal you're about to do, then for sure, maybe looking in the mirror and saying it's a great proposal, it makes sense. Telling yourself that as that identity at that time may be a very useful thing to do. But at other times, maybe if you're feeling certain ways and you're in a, like a safe space, again, it comes back to the idea of create, try to create some spaces where you feel that you can feel safe and can relax and explore even a little bit of certain feelings. Then maybe what are the other feelings about that you're having to sort of deny at that moment? Just acknowledge that, try to get a little bit more into the root of where that could be from. Um, it's not validating them or making them real. It's just acknowledging that they, they do can pop up. Um, and then maybe they, you know, they will shape shift from there. Um, we can be always new. Yeah. yeah. Um, look in the mirror, blah, blah, blah. Um, friends going on stage, we put their hands on their hips to feel like a superhero. I, I did some stage work. Um, and yeah, a lot of girlfriends more than the guy friends would put their hands on the hips. And I used to think it was very cool and I tried the old time, but it didn't really resonate. I felt like I was still feeling the same thing, but I was just having my hands on my hips um, sometimes I used to get really nervous before going on stage and I thought maybe this would help so I'd try for one second and I was like it really doesn't so I would just go on stage feeling <laughs> whatever the nerves or whatever feelings which maybe in some context feel completely unhelpful to what I'm about to do like hold poses for like a certain amount of time and you know but actually I did very well um, so somehow even with feeling all these feelings it still it still worked for me um, it may not in certain contexts but yeah, I'm sort of in the sense what, that it works for me even when I was like applying for doing acting world is actually, I, it was very hard for me to just deny any background feelings. I had to sort of acknowledge it in some way instead of just, you know, go, going, okay, this is the world that's actually bringing it into whatever was happening. I've, I've always found a little bit more useful. Okay, so yeah, um, breathe, feel, even if at times certain feelings feel unhelpful, we can be all of it. Um, yeah, again, it comes back it's in a safe space. Give yourself permission to feel even a fraction of what you tell yourself you are not. Um, if you give yourself affirmations, particularly, yeah, I mean, again, explore maybe those those ones which you, things you don't want to be if they're coming up. Um, microdose, it doesn't need to be like a full frontal expression of it um so for example let's say you like this guy or this girl suddenly like someone comes into the room and they're sort of on the whole vein of um yeah they they see this guy and they're like oh and now i'm in the vein of i just want to like be love myself and i'm going to come up to this guy with no awareness that maybe there's another relationship the guy or girl is in 
Um, you may be there going, okay, I'm in some kind of relationship with this person. Um, maybe you start feeling jealous or maybe you're like, oh, what's going on here? Um, this, this person doesn't really have a clue what's going on. Maybe feel a moment of that, but you don't want to maybe have the full expression of the feeling because then you might get a knife out and do something maybe not that useful, but maybe just feel, you know, the element of what you may not be that comfortable with, be it jealousy or be it like, um, you know, anger or fronting or, or whatever you feel. So give you a whole wholesome experience, which again comes back to that idea of perfection being just in a sense wholesome. Um... So explore identity, identifying the profoundness in that, disidentifying. So you feel things, but then you can go, okay, I'm this feeling, but also I'm not that feeling. I'm more than that feeling. Um, and that's a pretty profound. Um, and that applies to joy and happy feelings or like maybe feelings which could be considered more positive as well. So you're, you're really enjoying your handstand. You're in your handstand and then you're like, I feel great here. But then you're like, I'm also more than this. Um, so that's like a, a powerful sort of meditation. Um, the airflow continues in some way, regardless of how you're feeling. And unless a moment of pause. So that can have many indications. But sometimes, yes, we do pause our breath. Kumbhaka, the, the moment of holding or pausing or expanding, but not letting the, the air flow in and out. Um, it could be uh, some other kind of pause as well, sort of mental, physical, etc. Um, what's in you is in me. So this whole exploration is probably what it comes down to. So the more we explore these aspects of ourselves, we're like, ah, you, you see it in others. You have a better understanding of anyone, really, because you're not just denying certain experiences are within you. Um, you, you know that they are and that they can also be in other people as well. Um, yeah, so it, the yoga can all be about this. Um, so, you know, the, the forms are like, now we do a, a handstand, now we do a down dog, now we do a warrior one, now we do a warrior two. But we are exploring being a different identity in our physical form, a different container for the breath and mind, which, um, yeah, is a profound thing. Um, and also when we have this wholesomeness, then um, the aspects are recognised as I see you when you, you're with people. So also... Um, yeah, it's like our business is sort of in a sense one. Um, what was that? Embodiment, the ability to explore shape shift can be via movement, breath, language. Um, any other ways you like to play with your embodiment or, or being different? Like family roles and parent role, you know, friend role, sister role. Are they, are you similar in all of them or how are you different? You know, coach in what aspects? Um, also, humour can be sometimes very much about doing or saying the unexpected. Um, it can be also pointing out what, what is there. And then people get uh, like, oh, this is so funny. But you're really just articulating what can come up. So that's a, a useful way to just play with these different aspects of self. Because people then relate to it um, but in a sort of more lighter way. And yeah, oh, the other thing I wrote was, how do you feel if you meet someone or you know someone and every time you meet them, like you, you know how they're going to respond. So you know how they're going to feel in a sense or what they're going to say um, in response to stuff. Is it an interesting <laughs> meeting that every time you meet them, you have the same, they, they come up with the same conversation? Um, so that's also the sense of the more you explore the embodiment you know, you, you have different aspects to to draw on. So you're not always the same. Um, I actually have a relative who every time I speak to him, like he calls and he's like, the first words out of his mouth, like most of the time, are like, COVID is dangerous. And I'm like, the first few times I was like, okay, okay, let's just, okay, um, that's, that's a fine. And then I realised he does this to everyone, like when we're on group chats with family, he's like, the first words he picks up the phone, COVID is dangerous. I mean, and I, you know, I, I was like, should I say something? You know, he's older. Um, and then I was just like, I can't deal with this anymore. Every time he calls and it's the first words, I was like, can you please just not say that every single time? Um, and then, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, OK. And then we started talking about different things. And then he, he would start telling people, oh, I really enjoyed talking to Katie. Um, and then when I listened to him talking to other people, like they would just go along with everything he was saying the same time. So they would have the, pretty much the same conversation every time they spoke to him but then when you're but actually if you start to explore other aspects of self it's not just 
um, interesting for yourself, it's actually really interesting for the other person because you're giving them the opportunity to, to be different, which is pretty um, like new and fresh and live and, and youth and um, yeah, being, which is alive, which is, can be pretty cool. Um, okay, well, maybe he gets to, yeah, other, maybe he gets to explore other ways of being um, in that kind of context. Okay, so imagining and our sensing and our feeling, all our feelings interlink to create our consciousness experience. So all our senses and feelings are part of that consciousness experience. Again, it comes back to that whole saying that if you love yourself, what are you loving? Because your your sensory feelings may be changing um, a lot. So that's the shape shifting. Um, identify identity play. Um, whatever. I'm a sucker for exploring back bends and handstands. Well, that's quite obvious to people who know me. Um, I find personally a raw changing of embodiment in these things um, and it's also a new real love of mine is surfing so I'm a beginner surfer but just the way to challenge like to suddenly learn to get certain certain waves and things when something happens which is different suddenly I can turn suddenly I can occasionally catch a wave as opposed to just getting whitewash it's like I feel like I have a new embodiment a new way of being um, and then I, that can relate to a lot of things uh, when you do new things or learn new way, languages or ways. So it's not just surfing. Um, and then that's for me what the crux of the whole yoga thing is about. Um, so on Instagram, there is like a lot of um, in yoga and fitness industries, a lot of this like look at my bum, me pouting, me flexing, that kind of stuff. Um, it's not to say certain ways of being are wrong, but then you're like, what, what is the, um, the connect? The connection, like as an isolated thing, it's it's that's happening. But if it's connecting with selling fitness or yoga, what's the connection? If it's like, OK, look at my bum because I've done these bum workouts. Now you can see the muscle here. OK, there may be a direct connection. Um, if you're looking at it from a yoga point of view, our physical way of being or physical being is just one aspect. So we've got our breath body. We've got what's going on in the mental experience, other kinds of senses. Um, so is it steering people to think that certain aspects are sort of the dominant ones? It's so hot where I'm, I'm sweating. But is it, or is it giving people, what's, what's the context? And, and I think that's always what it has to come back to. What is the context? Um, we have physical bodies that are super useful. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being naked. It's cool. Um, I, I, years ago, I did a naked photo shoot. I think I did it more just to see whether I'd be comfortable with it. Um, to explore like another way of being and I was and I was like okay well I can do it but I don't have to keep on doing it and I think that's um, crucial in in lots of things so you can do certain things but it doesn't mean you have to do them um, what are you trying to show there is criticism of like or well, there's been said that there's criticism of using sexuality to sell yoga um, you know it's it's Instagram so I wouldn't really always take Instagram so seriously. I, I can understand when the people, some of them are criticizing. I can understand the intention of what they're saying, but um, it's what I've mentioned that yoga is more than the physical aspect. So it can give people a slightly, um, maybe the wrong slant of what it's about. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things to consider. It's just different angles to consider and not to say one is right or one is wrong. Um, also, just to see the honesty in what is being shown, I think then makes things a bit more clear. You know, like if someone's just sh showing themselves always, let's say in bikinis, because the they've got some guy they like who's about to start to following them on Instagram. Their intention is not to sh to say, okay, this is yoga. It's really to to get the guy's attention. So the intention is super important more than the what's actually going on. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, um, embrace ways body can move now. Yeah, enjoy the exploration. Um, what do you find the most sensual? As a general question, that's quite interesting. Because sensuality is part of our consciousness experience. Um, yeah, so for me personally, I find intelligence one of the most um, can be super sensual. And yeah, so what is it for you? Um, I mean, for me personally, it can be easy for someone to swing a camera um, around, um, but it's to deeply feel an experience is a sensory experience, which is, um, yeah, for me, very attractive. Um, some countries have restrictions on outward expressions, so that's something to bear in mind on this whole sensuality issue. So, so for example, 
the Middle East. There's a lot of countries on their Instagrams. You won't people see people posing around in bikinis and being naked because, you know, they'd be arrested by their country. Um, so I'm not going to go into whether that should be the, the law or not in these countries. But to but obviously a lot of these people on Instagram who are not able to have that ability, um, they're, they're deeply sensual. Um, so it's not about sensuality is not defined by the ability to be in a bikini on Instagram or to go naked on Instagram. Sometimes the most sensual are not the, the people you see like that. Um, so just, yeah, this is, I mean, these are quite obvious things, but just areas um, on that whole area of, yeah, w what are you, you showing? What are you portraying? Whatever you are showing and portraying is fine, but just be honest about the intentions behind stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I know very intelligent guys who know that as soon as they post like their big flexing muscles on Instagram doing, they're going to get like a lot more traffic and then maybe they can write something which is deeply useful and insightful. So there's so many layers to these kind of things to be, to be aware of. Um, yeah, sensing the sensuality is a crucial aspect of yoga exploration. It's our way in really to being is to sense and to feel. Um, yeah, what do I, let's be honest when it's more about validation and just exhibiting one aspect of the self because it is physically is an an aspect um yeah so yeah let's also not use sensuality as an excuse to steal other people's partners because that can go on as well oh, i'm being sensual and you know that's my natural self well if that person's in a relationship with someone go and be sensual with someone else you know these kind of things are just like don't lose moral ground by um by saying you're sensual or that kind of thing this is um part of yoga as well um so, yeah any any views on any of what i've been saying um yeah anyway 100 percent. no thank you <laughs> so yeah humor coming back to humor like what is your humor um i would say i've got quite sometimes a very brash direct humor um but it's you know i think whatever people's humor are sometimes it can be very it's very much based on shining light on what's going on and then people can, if they if they do laugh, they find it funny. It's because it's sometimes the shock of actually, oh yeah, that's going on. Um, someone's dared to articulate it, maybe in a slightly softer way. In so humor can be a really cool way of shining, or like trying to say something to someone, or because we are all interconnected. It's like the whole concept of minding one's own business is, you see it written somewhere, mind one's own business. I don't mean that we get in people's into people's gossip and stuff like that. It's a completely different thing. But what one is one person's business does affect everyone else. Um, so, you know, there's, there's obviously intelligence and like, you, you don't need to know, like, necessarily who, like, famous Jack is dating so-and-so. Um, but, you know, if someone's doing, have, running a business and they're doing certain things, um, and it's affecting people or, you know, it's, it's more than just one person being affected. It's a lot of people. Um, what does relating mean to you? Um, so that's an interesting one as well, related to this whole idea of perfection being the sense of wholeness. Um, so considering all aspects of self, um, yeah, be careful with re when people relate to you or when people relate to me, you know, if you have an Instagram account, you're, you're generally happy, lucky at some point to have people going, oh, I love what you write. I love what you do. I love what you say. Just be a little bit careful of that because you know, it doesn't really always mean that because someone relates to you, it's, it's true or it's, it's clear. Um, yeah, something in the whole context of, um, minding sort of own business or like not understand, like everyone's got their own history. Um, I hear sometimes people saying, well, you've got to be careful because not to me personally, but just like in what they write on Instagram, because you don't know people's history. Um, now, I think any coach or any teacher has this sensitivity, hopefully, that yes, you don't always know where people are coming from. So you want to like say things sometimes in a, in a, in a soft way. You, let's say I'm working with someone in handstands and they're bending their arms, you know, and we're going for like straight arm handstand. They may not know that arms are bent. So I may, depending on the person, may affect the way I tell them that it's straight, but I will say that the, that the arms are bent, but they, I, I may say it in a different way to different a different person. So, you know, but I will still tell them that their arms are bending to try and help them get into a straight handstand. I'm not just going to go, well, I don't know where they're coming from, so I don't want to offend them. You know, there's ways to um, to say to say things, um, but we can still be honest. Um, okay, yeah, what did I write? This, I thought this was quite a cool I, um, 
comparison I wrote. But anyway, so everyone has their own souls to walk in. Okay, this is a pun as well. But like anything in particular context, that's not helpful. If you buy shoes that fall apart after one wear, and that keeps happening every time you go to a shoe store. So you go to the specific shoe store, every time you buy those shoes, you wear them once and they fall apart. You probably wouldn't be particularly happy with the shoes. Um, most people wouldn't be happy with the answer that you don't know the shoe manufacturer's life story. Um, does that make sense? So, you you know, if you're buying something, you wouldn't just say, OK, well, they could have had a traumatic childhood. <laughs> so it's OK that my shoes um, don't aren't actually shoes. They don't last. Um, it doesn't mean you wouldn't want them to, to help them to understand how to make longer lasting shoes. But in some kind of way, you would try to tell them that yeah, the shoes are not shoes after one wearing. Um, so perspective is everything. Um, context is everything. Um, sometimes you see it written, perspective is clear on the top of the mountain. That's not the case always. Sometimes you can climb a mountain and it's cloudy. So yeah, be careful of puns or like sayings because they're not always accurate. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to also get back to is like the sense of eros. Eros is, um, hey, um, can be seen as deep engagement desire. Um, so eros is sometimes used as the sense of I just want to sleep with someone. Um, it's not the meaning, the root meaning of that is not that it's um, deep engagement desire, which comes back to the sense of wholeness, which is in, tr in the translation of the word Hebrew is in a sense perfection. So deep desire is in ultimate objective desire is sometimes the divine. So the divine connection, not just with one person, even though that can be great as well. Um, does yeah and then I write again does relating to something make it true no I can relate to someone feeling like they don't want to get out of bed to use the loo but is it wise not to get out of bed to use the loo probably not so yeah be careful of this whole idea this concept of re people relating or yeah for sure sometimes people relate and it's it's super useful but it can also bring people down the rabbit hole of just not in a very useful way um, so just to do a full circle the life energy in the body is universal. We have a common humanity. So we're not all, in a sense, minding our own business. We are all connected. We transform um, when one person transforms. In martial arts, we bow. Um, we bow in a sense of equal. So it, this whole embodiment, exploration, understanding of self is not just for you. It's for, in a sense, everyone. Because then you, you see you in me and me in you, which is pretty cool. Um, and then getting back to that whole idea of shalom in Hebrew means peace, in Arabic salam means salam means peace, and both of these, the root of the word is wholeness. Um, yeah, all beings are one family. Okay, so this is my podcast for today. Um, it's a pretty long one, but it was really nice seeing you guys join. And yeah, it will be posted at some point on the podcast on Spotify. Wishing you guys all a wonderful day. If you want to share anything um, or write anything about what I've just been chatting about, that's super cool. And it's always really useful to hear. Also, any suggestions for the next podcast, areas you want to dive into in this whole sense of just living, being, um, being many things and exploring that all is pretty awesome. Okay, bye. And I always have this issue of turning it off. Okay.